Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jude Meyer, superintendent at Gallia County Local Schools, and I'd like to welcome everybody to our first episode of School Pride Countywide Gallia County Local Schools. First and foremost, I want to thank Dr. Johnston and our studio staff here today for the wonderful opportunity to talk a little bit about Gallia County Local Schools and the great things that we're doing. Uh, without Rio Grande and their opportunity to bring us into the studio, we wouldn't have this. And I can't thank them enough for all the things that they're doing in partnership with us. As you know, Gallia County Local Schools has existed for a long time. Uh, what people probably don't know is all the new and exciting things we've been doing in the district. Back in the fall of 2015, we did some things to change a little bit with the way we do business. Uh, we brought back dual busing, which means now we actually bring our kids to school in two waves. We bring our high school, middle school kids earlier in the day, and then we follow up with our elementary kids and our preschool kids. And that's made a big difference in cutting down the amount of time that our students are spending on a bus. We also added a digital program, so we do blended learning courses. We've got some really creative ways that we're working with kids. We started a preschool program that I'm happy to say has branched out into all four of our elementary schools. In addition to that, we have a Chromebook initiative where all our kids grades 2 through 12 have a Chromebook that they use on a daily basis that helps bring them up to date with technology and our teachers have done a wonderful job incorporating curriculum into that. So we've really came up with some great initiatives. So I think if particularly if you've been maybe a, a, a person that looked at the schools in the past and I want to reach out to the Hand and Trace and southwestern areas where I know before the dual busing you maybe spent a lot of time on buses. I, I would ask you to take a closer look at our school system and we would love to reconnect with those families that, um, that have maybe left us in the past because I think we're doing some neat and exciting things. <coughs> we offer very um, various programs to our, our people, um, including we value the arts. We have an arts council that meets, you know, usually quarterly with a great art council and, and art and, and scholastic day that we have downtown with the French Art Colony. Uh, so we value the arts. Obviously, we value our athletics, our band, our choir. Um, we're here today to talk about rigor and some of the neat things. And I think the neatest thing, at, value count, at Gallia County, we value the opportunity for our kids to participate and I know when you go a lot of places you may pay participation fees and athletic fees and things like that we don't do that and I, I kudos to our Board of Education we know that our families work hard for their money and we know that our, we want our kids to have that opportunity so whether it's covering the cost of an AP test or them to be in the play or to be in the musical or to be in an athletic event we don't want to burden our families with that so Without further ado, I'm really excited to introduce my guests here today, and they are all members of River Valley High School. And I'm going to start with Miss Cynthia Graham, and I can tell you a, just a brief story. I met Cynthia Graham um, in my interview for the superintendency, and I remember at the end of the interview, she says, if you get the job, we're going to have a conversation. And lo and behold, on February, I think, 14th, 2014, the first day I met with the staff, she came up to me and she said, Mr. Myers, when are we going to have that conversation? So, Cindy, if you could introduce yourself and tell a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, I am a 31-year veteran with the Gallia County Local School District, so I've kind of been there from the beginning of the consolidation, deconsolidation, and then the new building. And uh, I, I have two more years when I worked with adult education and I am a graduate of Rio Grande. I'm an alum here and I came through with a communications comprehensive degree a long time ago. They don't even have that anymore. And then I came back to do my secondary education work and I have a master's degree from Mary Grove College. Thank you. Um, on my right is Miss Bree McClung. I also met Bree very quickly into my tenure here. And the first thing I noticed about her was how involved she was with her students and she invited me to Constitution Day but I also know Bree is very passionate about sports so we always get to talk <laughs> about sports and and who's doing what and the standings and things like that but Bree we're, we're happy to have you here and if you could share a little bit about yourself 
Okay, my name is Bree McClung. Uh, I teach AP Government and American History at River Valley. I've been teaching in Gallia County for 18 years. This is my 18th year. I went to Marshall University. That's where I got my bachelor's and then I received my master's from there also in secondary ed with an emphasis in geography. Um, I really do enjoy teaching the AP classes, which I've been doing now for about seven years. And finally, on my far right is Mr. T.R. Edwards. I should call him Dr. Edwards. Um, I work with him on a daily basis, and um, some, he's done some really neat things in the district. He's led our Chromebook initiative, and he's done a lot to train our staff when it comes to uh, Google Docs and, and, and take the leadership role on that. So he's been absolutely a leader when it comes to the technology, and um, excited to have him here and tell a little bit about his story. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh, having me here today on the show. Uh, just a little bit about myself. First of all, I do want to say I'm a 2001 graduate of River Valley High School. Um, and, and that's one thing as, as the principal in the role I'm in now, um, the, the staff that we have there, they, they are truly committed to the school. They're committed, committed to the community. They're committed to the students. And uh, the, it's a good place to be. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good day to be a Raider. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, but anyways, uh, from that I went to Moorhead State University for my undergrad, uh, my master's is from Marshall, and then I, I headed back down to Moorhead for my uh, educational doctorate degree. But this is my seventh year as principal at River Valley High School, and uh, I started out as a math teacher actually there in fall of 2005 and uh, taught for three years, moved to the central office for uh, three years, worked with grants and federal programs, some of the curriculum. And uh, then I was given the, the opportunity to go to River Valley High School, and it's been seven years of a lot of fun. Yeah, it has been. And let me state for the record, I couldn't ask to work with better people, creative, hardworking, student-centered, and um, in our relationships, I think, go beyond, you know, just the professional. I can sincerely sit here and call them friends. And... Um, Gallia County Local Schools is very fortunate to have that leadership in the classroom and in the building and I'm very proud of these three and their teams and what they've been able to accomplish. So Mrs. Graham, we're going to get this thing kicked off okay. here this, this, this afternoon. And about a year ago, we, went in, we got in a car, you and myself and Rochelle Halley, our curriculum director, we headed to Chicago for an AP forum. We had about 12 hours of talk time in the car and many hours in Chicago at this AP forum. Yes. And we talked and we dreamed and we had conversations. But so much has happened in that time between our trip to Chicago as yes. an observer and a, an attendee at a conference. And if you can share your story of where we're at now and all that stuff that's happened in between. Well, you know, it's really hard to share it all because so much has happened and is continuing to go. It's like it's exponential growth. I mean, it just keeps growing. And uh, some of the areas that I would talk about would be networking and professionalism and tangible products. But before we go there, when we started at uh, the forum, I had no idea what we were looking at, but you were a former AP teacher and you encouraged us to go there. And that opened up all those doors that we saw all this rigor and the people were so friendly. Sometimes AP is, is uh, framed as something that is beyond our reach. And we have found, no, it is not beyond our reach. It actually becomes a vehicle and a tool that we can use. So. Uh, we are going back, this is the exciting part, we are going back in 2018 to be presenters. And I told you that I, I'm a very competitive person, everybody <laughs> sitting at this table knows that. So when we had word, I called and I said, so tell me, is this really a big deal or is this the third place steer at the uh, county fair that there were only three steers in the pen? And she said, no, your proposal was chosen from hundreds. And I think it's because it's universal. And that proposal talks about educational uh, efficiency and we have that uh, proposal here. And I'll just read through it. Educational efficiency is the byword of a small Appalachian public school district located in southeastern Ohio. An accurate correlation can be drawn between this rural district and inner city school districts. 
a legacy of poverty, geographic isolation, fewer employment opportunities, broken homes, and drug addiction plague both entities. And how do schools reach these students in a significant, meaningful, and long-lasting way? And we go on down to the bottom of this paragraph, our answer is rigor and partnerships. And the bottom of it, the answer to a legacy of poverty, geographic isolation, few employment opportunities, broken homes, and drug addiction, rigor and partnerships. And that, that is where we are. We are not afraid to, um, we are not afraid to address those issues. And I told you, we've been on the defensive because public education defends itself all the time. So how do we become solid and solvent within the classroom and know what we're doing? And instead of running away from rigor and being afraid of it, we said, fine, let's just go after it and get it. And that's why we went to the forum. That's why we're now in a dual credit situation with Rio Grande, which you're going to address later. But that's what it's all about. We have three professionals who on their own dimes are coming to this forum because they believe in it so much. And that's uh, Rachel Stokes from North Carolina. She's an AP professional and um, James Garner from Arkansas and Ryan Susky from the Ohio Center for Law Related Education. They'll all be on our team when we appear in Chicago. So how exciting is all of that? That's excellent and uh, the opportunity for Gallia County to present in Chicago yes. <laughs> is just something that is is a tribute to you and your team and your leadership and I'm so proud of all of you Thank and you. we cannot wait to be there to support you and uh, and and I think the neat thing about this whole project that was really teacher driven um, it was a grassroots effort where the teachers got together they talked to their principal and they're growing this from the bottom up and that's not always how education works mm -hmm. so um, Teachers can lead. You don't have to be a principal. You don't have to be a superintendent to lead. You can lead in the classroom. And um, I'm glad our teachers took that leadership opportunity because our kids are going to uh, really uh, benefit so right. much for this opportunity. Right. And I, I think, you know, that statement I gave you by that Phil Boyd guy kind of sums up what, I, what I'm saying. And that is we are saying we're going to change the culture. We in a small town area like this we have that ability and that's what our intent is is to make our students feel as though they can compete wherever they go that they have the ability and the intelligence to do that and we are not going to drop our accents when we go to Chicago we are who we are and I, and I can speak from a building perspective of that's one thing that the in the AP classes you guys talk about is yep. being being proud where you're where you come from but uh, taking hold of that right. and, and understanding that you're not limited by that right that the hard work and and pushing that bar is going to get you there mm -hmm. that's yes. excellent at this time we're going to take a short break um, school pride countywide Gallia County local schools will be right back We are back with School Pride, countywide, Gallia County Local Schools, and we resume this conversation with Mr. Edwards, the principal at River Valley High School, and he's going to talk a little bit about what the AP program is and what that means to our kids. Mr. Edwards. Yeah, one of the first questions may be, what, what is AP? And, and AP itself is, is advanced placement. It's in a, it's in a set of courses that, that students can take. Uh, that can be offered in a building that's advanced placement. But we started this journey back in fall 2001 uh, and with three AP courses. And, and again, kudos to, like you said, kudos to those teachers who, who wanted to take that next step. Um, but, but they are continuously progressing and refining their craft as a teacher um, to make those courses the best they can. But I guess at River Valley High School, you know, as we talk about AP and we say what is AP, we've kind of developed AP more than just those courses. Mm -hmm. we've, we've looked at AP as more of a concept um, than just an offering. The concept is that bar, that expectation, mm -hmm. uh, the level of learning, what we're asking the students to look at and do and, and uh, work with. Um, by not looking at AP as a particular course, it's, it's set a standard, yes. I think. I think you're and right. uh, it opens a co the conversation across grade levels, across curriculum areas, um, looking at it more of as a concept and, and again going back to that rigor mm -hmm. that uh, you guys were really looking for and digging for. 
Um, with that being said, we currently offer three courses at River Valley High School that are AP approved courses. Uh, those are AP Language and Literature, AP Composition and Literature, which Mrs. Graham teaches, mm -hmm. and AP United States Government and Politics, which is what uh, the course that Ms. McClung teaches. So, I guess a little bit about AP, you can score anywhere from a 1 to a 5. Mm -hmm. And you would think that a 1 would be where you would be shooting, right? <laughs> right. But, but that's really not. A 5 is the highest score. Um, and most generally, uh, AP, a score of at least a 3 is accepted really across the, oh. the country. Uh, the world. Uh, the world. It's international. Yeah, it is international. Mm -hmm. uh, across the world, that, that, that is a level, and the students have, have achieved and attained that level of uh, knowledge and, and material they're able to work through the material. Um, but so, so what we've done is we've looked at that shift and where our mm -hmm. students are falling. Um, but when, if they go out with a score of a three, they're at least one course at the collegiate sure. level, right. um, if not more, um, universities are recognizing. And again, this isn't just in the state of Ohio. No. This is far reaching beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the unique things at River Valley High School is we haven't said uh, you have to meet this prerequisite or you mm -hmm. have to be up to the certain level. We've said to any students, it goes back to that culture piece that that it's more of a concept is if you want to work harder, if you want to really push yourself, maybe you're really good in a content area, mm -hmm. um, you want to challenge yourself a little bit, come, come on mm -hmm. and, and let's let's see if we can uh, work together to, to meet that level. So all students are eligible to take the AP courses, there's no prerequisites. Um, we, we don't it reduce the expectations in the no. class, though. Um, AP, there is a standard. And like I said, it's, it is that concept. It's, it's an expectation. It's mm -hmm. a bar. And if they want to work up to it, and that's, you know, we, we support them along the way, but definitely if they want to work up to that, then we encourage them. And we've seen, well, we have to offer more sections of AP mm -hmm. now right. because more and more students are wanting to uh, search for that bar, search for that uh, higher level of learning. Right, and a lot of college admissions uh, procedures actually look to see how many AP classes students have taken if, mm -hmm. if, if your high school offers that. So it's, that's a good thing too because it helps in that admission process. Well, and that's the standard that puts, pulls us all together. Right. Because when we know that we're all going for that standard, that international standard mm -hmm. then supersedes Ohio standards and federal guidelines. And we, we become really a globe, part of a global effort, not just something that's national. It's a unifying language. It is a unifying language. Mm -hmm. And when we get together, like at the forum, we will understand what they're talking about. That's neat. Yes. That's, that's, that's kind of a bad way to put it, I guess, but that's uh, colloquialism. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and really, to weigh in and brag about you guys a little bit, um, we honored um, Ms. McClung and some of her students at the board meeting, mm -hmm. but we really honored our students district-wide who have done exceptional on the test, just outstanding scores. Um, and Bree, maybe you can comment on how many threes, fours, and fives you had, okay. which is off the chart, but I also know in talking to other teachers, the growth has been tremendous. Oh, yeah. Yes, we've had tremendous growth. When we first started AP, I can honestly say I didn't know what I was getting into. <laughs> Once I started, it's actually made me a better mm -hmm. teacher. Mm -hmm. um, it made me rise to the occasion right. and I had to study and make myself better to help the kids and I've gotten better throughout the years. Our scores have gotten better mm -hmm. throughout the years and the past year we had the best scores that we've had. Um, we had two kids get fives, um, which is exceptional. Um, that's almost unheard of. We had three kids get fours, and then we had ten threes. So all those kids will get college credit when they go um, to college, and that, that goes pretty much any state in the country. It doesn't matter. So that's a big deal for kids to get that. Um, it also builds their self-esteem and makes them feel good that a kid from Appalachia can do that, mm -hmm. and that they can do anything. Right. Um, We've had kids, um, we have a student right now who went through the AP course the first year we had it and she's currently in law school. Mm -hmm. um, we've done some cross-curricular activities that I think have helped those kids even make career choices. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that um, the English department and uh, the social studies department do is work together as far as like writing skills go. Writing benefits any job field that you're going to go to and learning how to write in-depth essays is one of the things that AP addresses and it, it does that in nearly every subject level. So that has also helped our scores is teaching kids how to write and how to write well. 
we know that if kids are educated, they're more likely to be employed. Mm -hmm. um, and if they feel good about themselves, they're more likely to be employed, they're less likely to be incarcerated. So our goal is to create this community of people mm -hmm. that are educated, that are, uh, that are going to contribute to our society in a positive way. And one of the things we can do is take kids from lower income families and show them their opportunities that they can have. Um, we uh, take students out, my high school um, AP government kids go out and teach the Constitution. A lot of people wonder, do, you, do schools teach the Constitution? Yes, we do. We read every word of it <laughs> and then we go out into the elementary schools and we teach um, to the grade level kids. So the high school kids actually do the teaching. I think we have a picture of that. We could show that. Uh, in this particular picture, um, the students are teaching about the Founding Fathers to some of the younger kids. Um, we teach them about all the branches of government and we try to do it in a kid-friendly manner. What's happened since we've been doing this for seven years is I currently now get students who have been through this program and we're building a community that is constitutionally mm -hmm. aware. Mm -hmm. That is a that's that's a great thing to see and I when I have high school kids come in and say oh I remember when I learned about this <laughs> and that's a positive and it, it feels good to see that we're actually creating a community of educated people which is the goal when we first started um, we take the kids to the Supreme Court um, and like I said we currently have a student mm -hmm. in law school we have another that's probably going to go in next year we have students applying to Ivy League schools um, Ivy League schools do look to see if you've taken AP courses um, and one student in particular that's a senior this year that's applying did get a five on the test mm -hmm. so that's going to help her chances to get in mm -hmm. so it's been really beneficial as a teacher and for kids I can see it on both both sides and just as the importance of their talking about working as a team within their building and cross-curricular, we want to brag about our relationship with the University of Rio Grande. And we've got an outstanding partnership, and I think people think a lot of times we work in isolation, but we don't. And one of the programs that actually the university created for us, they created a program specifically for us that would allow us to go and cross-train our new preschool teachers that would be dual licensed, mm -hmm. both special education and the pre-k-3 certification they created that specifically for us and a lot of times people don't hear about those things when when the university works in partnerships with your local districts but it goes far beyond that partnership and there's a great partnership that river valley high school has also developed and i'd like them to kind of elaborate on that partnership and how rio grande has done some really unique things with them well again the the ap program um, focusing on it allowed us to present syllabi that were rigorous enough that Rio Grande felt comfortable with allowing us to teach dual credit. Um, Dr. Sachs has been amazingly kind and open and, and gives guidance, does not hesitate, and I find this comforting as an alum. You know, he questioned us. He made us go through the hoops to show that we knew what we were doing. But he was also familiar with the AP program and the AP standards. So he was comfortable knowing that if we had been audited and approved by AP and the college board, that, you know, we were okay. We were, so that, that took us again into that partnership that you're talking about. And that made it a lot easier for him to feel comfortable allowing us to come in. Now we're excited. I just shot an email to Jackson Connor, Connor Jackson, sorry, sorry, <laughs> Connor Jackson, uh, saying to him that we would love for him to come in and teach because they offered to come into the classroom. And now we're building ties for kids to feel comfortable when they go into the collegiate classroom, especially if they come here to Rio, mm -hmm. they'll know some familiar faces. So we are now actually teaching University of Rio yes. classes mm -hmm. under the AP curriculum where kids can receive the dual credit and potential AP credit. Right. Yeah. Right. And that, that partnership, it's, it's neat how that it's morphed. Uh, mm -hmm. into the, the students whenever they go into the class they're they're essentially in that CCP class as well as an AP class because we're right. still following that approved uh, AP syllabus but yet meeting the learning right. outcomes of the the University of Rio Grande syllabi so um, with that they can students who tested into it at the very beginning um, based upon a placement test you know they will receive the the college credit but then it again goes back to that spirit spirit of if you want to step up to to the plate um, you can do that so even if students didn't necessarily place into the 
to receive the credit at the beginning, and they want to work hard. Maybe they want to re refine their writing skills through, uh, mm -hmm. you know, their English class. They can take that AP exam in the end and, and still possibly receive the credit if sure. they they get at least a three. Um, so again, it's opening up lots of doors and lots of opportunities for students. Mm -hmm. yes. And I know. Um, we could talk all day about all the exciting okay. things, and I know we're running down on time, but um, if, Mr. Edwards, if you want to share a few things going on, we probably are going to have to book another studio time to come <laughs> back and, and Definitely. talk about the school, but there's so many exciting things going on in the district, and in this case, we're showcasing River Valley High School. If you want to share a few of those things before we wrap up. Sure. Uh, one of the things just a couple weeks ago, I had a group of students who made their, their voyage to Massachusetts, and uh, came out uh, looking pretty good, I yes, would say. They did. Uh, yes, the they group did. of parliamentary procedure students, uh, state, uh, second place in the mm -hmm. state, they qualified to go on to national parliamentary procedure competition at the Big E in Massachusetts, and they came out of there ranked fourth place in the nation. So again, a, a big shout out to our River Valley High School FFA, yes. and just recently, um, placed second in the state, or sending two teams to the state for uh, soils judging as well. So, mm -hmm. so great, great work by the this FFA. This is only September. This is only <laughs> September. So we are going to wrap up this edition of Gallia County Local Schools, School Pride Countywide. We have a lot more to cover, and I'm sure my guests will be back on a future episode. <laughs> and thank you again to the University of Rio Grande for this wonderful opportunity.